and a lot of Christians are Muslims with the label of Christianity and a lot of pastors are Muslim clerics with the name of Christianity on their neck but I'm telling you if confessing Jesus but living carelessly and foolishness and foolishly is what to take people to heaven but Muslims in spite of their diligence we say they'll go to hell I will say God is not fair why would careless people like us who are not serious the only thing we did is stand here and say Lord Jesus I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior and that is all we are going to heaven and somebody else who is so diligent and applies themselves to their religion with all committed commitment they would rather die and you say they are going to hell keep fooling yourself and they don't know what it means they don't know it they don't know born again do they know it how can they know it and be talking like that do they know what it means to be born again in fact some of them are not born again they are just rebranded they don't know what born again is how can a man know what born again is and be talking so gibberish they don't know it if you want to become a good christian eh, one day just beg the imam to allow you to go to the mosque for one week you will change <laughs> it's a shame it's a shame something that i admire a lot and i used yeah, to you know, and uh, it's very unfortunate that it has happened in this way so in the name of allah the most merciful and gracious one i ask for your forgiveness so he asked for forgiveness in the name of Allah. And to also apologize for the offense it has caused. <laughs> that was never my intention. <laughs> it was never my intention to offend, to disrespect, or to and deeply regret what has happened. I see it as a misunderstanding. It will not happen again. And uh, I want to apologize uh, to you and to all the Muslim community that I never intended to offend your faith or to disrespect your faith because I use your faith and your religion a lot in my preaching as an example of how a Christian should follow your examples, your discipline, your commitment, your consistency, your spirituality. It's something that I admire a lot and I use it. You know, and uh, it's very unfortunate that it has happened this way. So in the name of Allah, the most merciful and gracious one i ask for your forgiveness <laughs> it's a shame it's a shame because i use your faith and your religion a lot in my preaching as an example of how a christian should and a lot of pastors are muslim clerics with the name of christianity on their neck <laughs> it's a shame that's why the God of the Muslims, the God of the Buddhists is not the same God with us. Never you make the mistake to say, we are all worshipping the same God. Shut your mouth. Which is the same God? There are even churches that are preaching God, but they don't know Jesus. And it's not the same God with us. So, in the name of Allah, the most merciful and gracious one. Never you make the mistake to say, we are all worshipping the same God. Shut your mouth. Which is the same God? There are even churches that are preaching God, but they don't know Jesus. And it's not the same God with us. We are sitting there that we are born again. Born what? You are not even born before you will be born again. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I say, you must be born again. Born again means born anew. It is anathem genoa. Anathem genoa. A N A T H I M G E N A O. Anathem genoa. It means to be born from above or to be born anew born again is not second birth born again is the only birth before you were born again you were dead so if you are here you are not born again you are a dead man walking when you eat you are a dead man eating you are only born once when you are born of God teaching good let me be honest with you church i do not listen to any preacher on any subject 
and i mean this with every sense of responsibility i don't care the, the number of chains on the neck of the preacher or the collar i don't care the size of his cap i do not listen to anybody preach anything if i've not heard what he has to say on salvation i do not listen to any preacher until i have heard what he has to say about salvation salvation is the basic fundamental if a man can teach salvation he can't teach anything else you can't trust him on anything else that's fundamental that's the message of the entire bible that's what opens the bible and closes the bible salvation so if a man cannot handle salvation skillfully you can't trust him on anything else the theologian that i respect very deeply by the name ew kenyon ew kenyon says a denomination is known by its understanding of salvation a denomination or a church is defined by its position on the subject of salvation soteriology which is built on christology sets the premium or sets the environment or sets the premise on which christianity thrives so if a man cannot handle salvation you can't trust him on anything else because if a man cannot recite a b c d e f g h how can he make sentences how can he make sentences all sentences begin from that every teaching in the bible begins from salvation do you know that every question people ask all the questions is salvation related all 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 the questions should a woman cover her head is salvation should women wear trousers is salvation when you understand salvation you won't think of trousers Trust that does not say whether you cover your hair or not it doesn't say in fact you can stay naked god will hear you your nakedness does not intimidate god that's how he brought you to this world you are not brought with clothes why do you wear clothes so that people can be comfortable around you that's why when you pray in the bathroom naked god answers because god is not intimidated by your nakedness so whether you cover or you don't cover whether you wear or you don't wear it's not for god we are wearing for us that's why when you're alone in your room you don't wear anything and it's not a sin you're not hurting anybody because you're alone those things don't matter but when people are taught wrongly then they begin to set up a code of ethics that are unscriptural and they use it as a barricade for their relationship with god the bible says they put on themselves yokes which even the fathers could not bear christ is simple my yoke is easy my body is light let nobody corrupt you from the simplicity that is in christ so born again is to be born anew or to be born of the spirit you are born of the spirit into the family of god the spirit is the life of god that is what came on your inside that got you born again god's own life and what jesus was simply explaining to nicodemus in john 3 3 and 14 on being born again is to be born of god nicodemus be born of the spirit to be born into the kingdom of god this is the reality of the new birth this is the reality of being born into the kingdom salvation is not an upgrade salvation is not a renovation salvation is not the things i used to do i do them no more Sin. the born again man is a life that never existed before it's a brand new man therefore if any man be in christ he is what this man is a new species a new race a new breed of being that never existed before it's not an upgrade it's not an update it's not a renovation it's not an updated version it's a brand new man that does not have history only has a future we are his workmanship we are his handiwork created in christ jesus the born again man is a creation inside christ it doesn't have a past he's a brand new man but you need christ to have new life nobody gives new life only christ even science with all of his advancement cannot produce new life new life is the work of god ah, yeah, but where are the new men in the building shout i'm a brand new man i'm a new creation i'm a brand new man all things are passed away i'm born again more than a conqueror that's who i am i'm a new creation i'm a brand new man so to be born again means to believe in the son 
to be born again means to believe in the son to believe in the son means to believe in the work that the son did his death burial resurrection ascension as a substitute on your behalf that when he died you die when he was buried you were buried when he rose again you rose again therefore because of what he has done that you believe you are justified in first john chapter 5 verse 1 first john chapter 5 verse 1 whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god Hayadaba. is what born of god and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him how do i know i'm born of god when you believe that jesus is the christ you didn't hear that how do i know i'm born again when you believe that jesus is the christ not believe jesus christ believe that jesus is the christ of the scriptures you have to believe he is the christ who do you say i am thou art the christ that's what peter said thou art the christ the son of the living god christ whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god why the emphasis on the christ first corinthians 15 3 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received how that christ died for our sins according to the scriptures so to believe that jesus is the christ means to believe that jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and that next verse and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day how according to the scriptures so whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ which christ the christ who died according to the scriptures and was buried according to the scriptures and rose again for my justification according to the scriptures is born of god I'm teaching good romans 4 25 romans chapter 4 verse 25 who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification so whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ of the scriptures who died was buried and rose again on my behalf faith in the christ of the scriptures gives birth to you as a son of god is born of god first john chapter 5 verse 4 first john chapter 5 verse 4 for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith somebody shout i am born of god shout it very loud shout it louder you are born of god you are born of his life you are born of his spirit therefore you have his life but i'm telling you if confessing jesus but living carelessly and foolishness and foolishly is what will take people to heaven but muslims in spite of their diligence we say they'll go to hell i will say god is not fair why would careless people like us who are not serious the only thing we did is stand here and say lord jesus i receive you as my personal lord and savior and that is all we are going to heaven and somebody else who is so diligent and applies themselves to their religion with all committed commitment they would rather die and you say they are going to hell Keep fooling yourself i use your faith and your religion a lot in my preaching as an example of how a christian should follow your examples your discipline your commitment your consistency your spirituality we're dealing with the bottom line of these issues anybody talking god 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 that does not know jesus is not the same god with us because for us god is jesus jesus is god and without jesus there can be no god 
No man has ever seen the father. I am the one that can declare him. So anybody declaring the father outside me is a thief and a robber. Don't follow him. Amen. Amen. Don't follow. Anybody calling God that cannot talk Jesus is a thief. There are some churches if you preach Jesus too much you'll get angry. You say why are you calling Jesus? Why not talk God? Are you catching what I'm teaching here? That's why you shouldn't be moved by, by, by razzmatazz. That people are falling and vomiting. You need to find out what is making them vomit. Because Jesus didn't come to make us vomit. He came to give us life. I am come that they may have. Uh, he came to give life. Not to make you. That people are vomiting. You should find out why they are vomiting. Because it is not normal for people to be vomiting under God. So that's why if it is not Jesus, it cannot be God. Because Jesus is the face of God. Jesus is God. Somebody was chatting with me briefly this afternoon in the office and said um, that, 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 that she asked a question in their church. And the whole church went bananas. <laughs> Even the pastor, everybody's angry. And I said, what question did you ask? She said she asked the pastor in their church. Why is it that of all the religions in the world... We sit down here as Christians and say anybody that is not a Christian does not believe in Jesus will not go to heaven. What about people that grew up in idol worship? What about people that grew up in other religions and their founders claim that they will take them to heaven? Why is Christianity? Why? Why? Why does Christianity insist that until you receive Christ, you can't go to heaven? What makes it different? She said yes. I said number one. There is no religion on earth whose founder died and rose. None. None in the entire planet. Islam, the founder of Islam wrote in the Quran that Jesus will judge the world, including him. And the founder of Islam told his followers he is not sure of where he's going, but they should pray for God to have mercy on him. And that's why in Islam, before you call the name Muhammad, you have to pray that God has mercy on him. Then you can call his name. It's a rule in Islam. In other religions, their founders died and they're in the grave. Christianity is the only religion in the entire world where the founder said, I lay down my life and I will pick it up on the third day. And it is historically recorded. Is there in the open historical documents that Jesus actually died? It is historically recorded that he was buried and the tomb where he was buried was the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea who was a publicly known figure all over Israel. It's there in, on record that his tomb was used to bury Jesus. It is on record that soldiers were assigned to guard the grief. It is on record that the stone that they used to cover him you need more than 20 people to roll it away. So, if they stole the body, who stole it? Because first of all, you have to roll away the stone and you have to defeat the soldiers. Remember, his disciples couldn't have been the one that attempted to steal because all of them ran away. Peter, the chief of them, escaped and said, I know him not. I'm teaching good. I am a hunter. But it's also on record that after the third day, his body was not stolen, but they saw him all over Jerusalem. And it's on record that he appeared to 500 people. It's on record. How do you want to beat that? <laughs> it's on record. He appeared to over 500 people documented. He said, I will die and I will rise. On the third day, he rose. And they didn't disappear. He appeared to people. And I have news for you. The empty tomb is not the proof. The empty grave is not the proof. His presence in my life is the proof that he's alive. Glory to God. That is why you need Jesus. If you don't have him, you need him. He said he's the only he is the only one who confidently said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And he never asked his followers to pray for him. He prayed for his followers. He prayed for his followers. And he told his followers, I am going. When I go, I will come. He went and came. That where I am, you may be. And we are where he is. Glory to God. Are you aware of the persecution of the disciples? 
Why were they persecuting the disciples if truly he was in the grave and never came out? Why will what the disciples were, why was it that what they were saying was so powerful that they were persecuted for a man that is still in the grave? They beat them and told them, never talk in the name of that man. Why was the name of the man a threat? Why was it that the Jews in Jerusalem, why were they fighting to shut the gospel down? Because they knew the power that was in it. They knew that what they had was an empty grave. They knew that when they opened the, the grave, they didn't see anything in it. The man rose like he promised. Glory to God. I'm teaching you tonight. Now, observe this, observe this, observe this. <clears throat> everything that jesus rose from the dead to accomplish has become ours everything and how do we know it has become ours he has given us his spirit his spirit lives in our hearts we have proof of his spirit in our hearts his death was free his burial was free his resurrection has been given to us free so everything that Jesus gave us as a result of his death, burial, and, resur and resurrection is free. Just as his death is free. <laughs> How is Muhammad a comforter? A man who died not knowing where he's going and begs all his followers to pray for him. That's why all the followers of Muhammad, before they call his name, they will say a prayer. May God have mercy on prophet that is prophet muhammad is not sure of mercy he's not sure of where he's going and he is comforter where is comfort in that a man is not sure of where he's going how is that a comfort they don't call his name till they say a prayer because the man doesn't know where he's going and the quran says the quran says it's written in black and white that jesus will judge the world so if Jesus will judge the world and prophet Muhammad is not sure of where he's going, if I was them, I will take sides with the one that will judge the world. Won't you take sides with another? And Jesus said, blessed art thou Simon Bajona. This does not come by flesh and blood. This comes by revelation.